Uh, okay, so uh, all right. So I would like to uh, start by thanking the organizers for putting all their hard work and giving me this uh, opportunity. So, so I was uh, going to talk about this uh, quantum Brownian motion, and uh, so in this work we analyze uh, Rubin, Drude, and ohmic baths, and this is done in collaboration with Abhishek Urvashi in uh, of ICTS and uh, other two people of RRI, Ion and Suparna. <coughs> So, okay, so let me just uh, give you a brief introduction of what is this uh, all about. So, when we <coughs> talk about uh, Brownian motion, or when we think about it, we basically uh, think about uh, some, some uh, liquid and uh, something is bigger than the liquid particles and it is doing uh, <coughs> this random motion, right? And why does it happen? Because of the thermal fluctuations of the bath. The, ther the, the bath and the particle, everything is in thermal equilibrium. Now, uh, this, uh, this is, uh, you can do this, uh, see uh, this in, uh, I mean, under the microscope in our lab, if you want. So how to analyze this kind of motion? So <coughs> historically, people have done some phenomenology. So that is the, uh, <coughs> basically, Langevin equation. So where uh, this x represents the position of this particle, and eta is the uh, noise. And uh, historically, this is kind of the simplest uh, equation the, where this gamma naught is constant, and eta is the uh, Gaussian noise with, uh, <coughs> with delta correlated. So this uh, model, this equation is Markov. <coughs> that means the position and the velocity of the particle at uh, the next moment is only, de only depends on the uh, no, only depend on uh, what is its velocity and position at uh, this moment, and also the delta, the uh, noise, noise, noise is delta correlated. But this is not the most general model, okay? Because you know that uh, it is not basically true that the position and velocity of this particle uh, basically depends on its history. So the, we can generalize it by introducing this noise. some memory. So this is the memory kernel. So this is non-Markov. All right. So now uh, there are a few models. So let me just explain this word. So what is Ohmic, what is Drure? So the models are named uh, by choosing this uh, memory kernel, because we have to solve this equation, right? And so if I give this equation, this is a like integral equation. It's hard to solve. So, so this is uh, called uh, Ohmic. Ohmic is where there is uh, no uh, memory. So that means your gamma is basically delta, uh, is proportional to basically gamma zero delta t minus t plane. So if you put this into this equation, you'll basically get this equation because of the delta function. And for Rubin, so Rubin generalized this little bit and introduced a memory. So how? So it said like, uh, gamma zero by tau, it is over on by tau. So the bath has some memory, but it is exponentially decaying, okay. But with a characteristic time tau, tau, so this function looks familiar, right? If I took tau tends to zero, we get this delta function back. Yeah, so this is that uh, thing that Rubin, Drude, and uh, Drude, uh, Drude and Ohmic, okay. So this is Markov, this one non-Markov. So this is one, this is all classical right now, whatever, whatever I'm talking about. So how to do quantum? So if I take a liquid and if I, I mean, one way to go to quantum limit is to decrease the temperature. But if we have liquid and if I decrease the temperature, the liquid will freeze, everything, I mean, uh, nothing will happen, right? So then uh, one has to take some uh, sophisticated systems and perform experiments, for example, photonic systems, or I mean, there is a photonic bath, there is some atom. So this kind of experiments are uh, going on in, maybe RI and our other labs. So this is a little bit sophisticated than that. So question is, okay, so question is, uh, uh, these are all phenomenological and what are the quantities of interest that uh, quantities of, some quantities, uh, there are many quantities, the some are the mean square displacement of that Brownian particle. So we basically have this delta T, So this is the mean, mean square displacement and also the velocity correlation, maybe. <coughs> so uh, for that simplest model, what we learn in uh, like in 
courses or like very, very standard is delta t at large t basically goes as t, okay? And this velocity correlation go, uh, falls exponentially. So these are the signatures. So this is what, when we talk about Brownian motion, what, when we talk about Langevin equation, this we think about. So now, <coughs> question is, uh, and also uh, another uh, important point is the FDT, fluctuation dissipation theorem, because this fluctuation and this dissipation are coming, uh, both coming from the bath, they must be related, right? And so uh, we, we want to write the fluctuation dissipation in Fourier domain, why? Because you can see this is the convolution form and in Fourier domain, this equation is tractable. So let me just write down. So it looks like this, okay, so in classical. So now how to treat, how to introduce quantum mechanics in this system? So one way to do is to do linear response, okay. So this is like my system H, uh, and um, I mean there is some interaction and there is some environment, something like that. And if one does that, then the fluctuation dissipation relation changes a little bit. So let me just write. And uh, so when you talk about quantum uh, mechanics, then there are many ways to, de to deal with this kind of system. One way is uh, like what uh, uh, Chandan was talking about, like that kind of uh, path integral formulation. And uh, here, this, is, this approach will be the, basically the Heisenberg equation. These are, these are operators, this is operator, this eta is, everything are operators. So then, we, then when we do this multiplication of operators, we have to take the symmetric product, right? And Basically, one gets a very famous uh, fluctuation dissipation relation. See, in the whole theory, there is no h bar. So now you will see some h bar. So this is the most general fluctuation distribution theorem for, for this, at, at least in linear response regime. And you can get that formula back if you put that temp high temperature limit because cot hyperbolic will behave as one by x and this h bar omega, h bar omega cancel and you'll get that relation. So question is okay, that's, everything is good. So how to, so these are all phenomenological up to this point. So how to come up with a model, how to come up with a Hamiltonian which will give us all these things. Okay, so what are we are interested in? Uh, so we are interested in, in a Hamiltonian which will give me that equation, this behavior of delta t, this behavior of ct, this fluctuation dissipation theorem, okay? So the one, I mean, this is a system of many, I mean, interacting system. So one uh, elementary choice is, of course, the harmonic chain, like. So harmonic chain, so if you want to model this uh, three-dimensional system, one has to do in 3D, most probably, but uh, uh, like, uh, we want to do a very simple system. So what can be our choice? We can take just, one spring like, and like this. That's how everything is same. This could be a choice, and we could focus on this particle. But okay, this doesn't uh, represent this system maybe. So maybe we can uh, change this mass, make it bigger. And maybe because let's say this atom is uh, interacting with a different potential, so this is k prime, this is k prime, this is k, this is k. So okay, but uh, this, is, this, this can be a good model. Maybe or we, what, in our work, what we do, we basically cut it from the half and we just consider this simple system. So this is M, this is K, this is M, this is K prime, this is capital M. Okay, so we have room to uh, uh, do all the things like M equals to M, K prime equals to K. And so how to, uh, how to analyze this system? So we can of course write the Hamiltonian because it's harmonic interaction. And because the bath is harmonic, we can integrate out the bath. So that is very crucial the, for the harmonic, uh, I mean, because of the, I mean, because of this harmonic choice, we can integrate out the bath and we can get this equation, all right. We, this equation with this particular gamma. So what is the form of gamma if I treat this model? Question is, does it look like ohmic? Does it look like Drude or is it something else? So uh, answer is, it is completely different, okay. So you can see it's a uh, nasty form. Uh, so all parameters are there, small m, capital M, uh, I mean small m, k prime, k, everything is there. And uh, we can make it a little more simplify, simplified if I uh, put k equals to k prime. So if I do that, then I'll get basically this. 
Okay, and you can see this gamma t is uh, proportional to the Bessel function. So uh, we know that j1 basically uh, goes as 1 by root t for large t, and there is cosine 3 pi by 4 plus uh, some, I mean, something. And so you can see that uh, these are not these models, right? Because gamma t uh, in ohmic is, uh, uh, ohmic is delta uh, delta function, in Druda it is exponential. But here it is some different function, it is a, uh, it's a power law, okay? So question is, how can we, how can one obtain from this model, this basic model, to this uh, phenomenological models? That is one question, which we have answered in, the, in our work, that if we take this limit, if we take this particular limit, that uh, if I make k goes to uh, infinity, and this bath particle goes to zero, but keeping km fixed, I mean, that is less than infinity. So then one can actually reduce these kernels to that, to this particular kernel, okay? Where gamma zero will become basically square root of km, and tau will become square root of km by k prime. So this is one of uh, our achievements in this work. So you can see that uh, this is happening because there is a cutoff, very sharp cutoff, and when I take k tends to infinity, m tends to zero, this is basically going to infinity and something is happening. All right, and you can uh, deal with this k, k prime, and you'll get a Drude model and ohmic model. All right, so now if we look at others, uh, other quantities of interest, for example, the mean square displacement or velocity autocorrelation and other response function, everything. So how does that look? Okay, so the answer is this. So, uh, <coughs> So people have already studied in these uh, simple models that uh, in quantum, I mean at zero temperature when the fluctuation is uh, like, there's no thermal fluctuation but only the quantum fluctuation, people have showed that this uh, goes as uh, log t instead of t, all right? So we have done many calculations but those are very messy, so I just show you the plots. So you can see that, uh, so the, the, the mean square displacement looks like this, and if I took the log t, log delta t, and time, so that means that log linear plot, or sorry, delta t and log t, you see that there is some region when uh, delta t is proportional to log t, and after that it is exponential of log t, that means the linear behavior. So there are both behaviors in the quantum region. So the simple message in quantum Brownian motion, so up to a time scale, beta h bar, there is the mean square displacement behaves as log t, and after the time scale beta h bar, it behaves as t. So, and how does this behave, this uh, velocity autocorrelation? We are saying uh, ohmic uh, or Drude, one gets this ex uh, exponential decay, but here it is completely different. Here we get uh, some decay and then there's a power law. So completely different from exponential, okay? And uh, so in Drude also, uh, one can see that uh, <coughs> because uh, there is log t, so this is very simple. Uh, if I just write, so delta t uh, it goes as log t, and uh, before t is less than beta h bar, and t, uh, t is greater than beta h bar, you can see that uh, velocity autocorrelation, uh, t plus basically e to the power minus t correction. So first it decays, and then it is, because it is log t, if you take the double derivative, you will get one by t square, and then again it decays exponentially. This is one feature in uh, Drude model, uh, which we have shown uh, both numerically and analytically. And now question is Rubin versus Drude. The thing I said that if I make that k large, k and k prime large, so can we uh, do, I mean, can we see in the data? The answer is yes. See if I increase the k, the Drude and Rubin, this dotted is uh, uh, Drude, and this solid, solid is Rubin, they are almost matching. And the match is becoming uh, more and more, you know, uh, better uh, when I increase k. So this is, this actually works, this limit works, okay? And this, you can see that signature in delta t as well, that for larger k, this uh, uh, Drude and Rubin are kind of matching, which we uh, propose. And that's it, and thank you, and I mean the, uh, Sorry, the future, in future we can do like uh, higher dimensions and um, I mean, other than harmonic interactions, uh, like anharmonicity, like uh, this Chandan is doing, and so on. Thank Thanks, you. Thanks, Avid. Questions? Questions?
when we talk about the quantum brownian motion do we have to be careful about whether we are talking about fermions or bosons uh, this is uh, like harmonic system this is like uh, bosonic system uh, harmonic system <coughs> there are some papers but uh, this is not fermionic i mean yeah i mean you start from that model okay you start from hamiltonian then every whatever it happens it happens like that but uh, but in, even harmonic chain, you have the bosonic basically. Yeah, classically, like uh, this fluctuation dissipation relation, we get by invoking the notion of equilibrium distribution, right? Yeah. So, but uh, in quantum mechanics, uh, the equilibrium distribution is going to be different for bosons and fermions. Right, and uh, for harmonic, I mean that means the bosonic distribution. Yeah. So I was wondering uh, the uh, this thing which you have written, whether it was for fermions or for bosons. Um, I'm for I'm sure for bosons, but I'm I think it will also work for fermions because these you can derive from linear response and that doesn't care. Uh, I think uh, so. I'm not sure. Uh, Aviji, uh, stupid question. So uh, the small masses that you have, non the small masses that you have, yeah, yeah. those are the corresponding bath degrees of freedom in your. That's right. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. Okay, I see. Uh, so uh, in in your model, your uh, so this is just a representation. You just used uh, two small masses. So you're showing just two small. No, no, masses. it is infinite. It's just yeah, a representation, it infinite, right? right? Okay. I mean, otherwise, how do you talk about exactly. thermodynamics? Yeah. Yeah. So it has to be thermodynamic limit, okay? Okay, but you just have one big mass. I mean, I have drawn it, and I cannot. Yeah, I mean, I, I could do it if I get uh, got more time. Yeah, they're, they're infinite. I mean, no, I'm just dot, saying. Dot, 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 you, dot, dot, dot. you have just one big mass, or you have many yeah, big. Yeah, that masses. is one big mass, and the bath is infinite. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I could, I could draw, the, but that takes time. Yeah. <laughs> So, no more questions. Let's thank the speaker again. And